Hello, this video is the first quick update on the development of the Perk programming language. We decided to start making monthly devlogs because, to our surprise, uh, the project just reached 100 stars on GitHub. We've got a lot of news, uh, we got a website, new features, documentation, learning page, and most importantly, uh, and the reason why I'm re-recording this intro, so there, there will be a few time skips in this video, uh, we have a playground. You can try out Perk right now. Now it's time for me to give myself a clean shave and jump on the TARDIS. Thank you to all of those who watched the last video, uh, provided their insights in the comments, and to the two people who sent pull requests. One of them we've already merged, uh, the, the other one we're working on it, but it's very good and we hope more people will contribute to the project going forward. Uh, in this video it's just myself, because Alessandro, PhD student at the University of Edinburgh, is currently in Korea. He will join us from the next devlog on, though, so you'll hear of his contributions from himself next month. Uh, now, I'd like to go through the commits that we received since we published the video. Uh, the first one was pull requests from Rukadi, who added Nix Flake support, so you can easily run the compiler uh, by typing something like Nix run uh, and then the name of the, of the repo. I don't personally use Nix, but it's very convenient to have a way to run the compiler uh, that does not involve cloning the repository and uh, compiling everything by hand. Next, we have a couple of uh, fixes in type checker. If you recall, uh, there were a few mis misimplementations, let's say, in the typing of Boolean expressions. Now those are fixed. And then a uh, major milestone in the implementation was the ability to parse C headers and gather the symbols and types they define. Uh, this is a quick explanation of how it works, recorded by my past self. Thanks, future self. Yes. The main problem was that whenever one wanted to use a C library function in Perk, like for example printf, even if they imported the library, they still had to declare the symbol as extern, because otherwise the, the Perk compiler would have no idea it existed. What I did uh, was I used something called C tags to generate a file with all the declaration, macros, and type defs contained in the import library. Uh, then I, I had to write a parser, which transforms each line of this into an intermediate representation that can be then retransformed into something that the Perk compiler can understand. So now, if I declare printf as extern, the LSP says I cannot do that because identifier printf is already defined. Of course, the system is not perfect yet, um, but if you want to contribute, uh, have a look at the issues page. Here it is, which is linked in the description. Uh, some of the issues are labeled as good first issue, and these are things like adding tests or tweaking the code generator and type checker slightly, uh, which will give you an idea of how the project is structured. Another way to learn how the project is structured is by using the documentations that are generated from the comments in the code. Uh, these are not complete yet, of course, but um, say, as you can see, if you, if you enter one of these, you will find comments uh, for almost anything, and they will guide you through the definition. So it's good to get an idea and then look at the source code, let's say. Um, and of course, I will work on adding more comments, but when I did this, I added documentations just uh, up to the point where my neck started hurting, because it turns out that we had not written many comments during the early phases of development. Uh, since we mentioned the website already, we have a learning platform here. Um, this contains like simple tutorials on how to use the main constructs of the of the language, and it's not complete yet. There's a few things we still need to to add, uh, but yeah, it's it's a good reference for those who want to learn the language. And it will be very important at the moment of first release to have a full and rich learning page. Okay, back to the commits. Uh, this is myself removing a very big file. Uh, then this is when I did a cleaner only, and back to the series commits. Uh, we, and by we I mean Alessandro, PhD student at the University of Edinburgh, added elseif command. So no more ifs nested inside of elses, uh, which is good. We, as in him, also added lots of GitHub actions that do things like running tests or updating the documentation. Then uh, a thing that we 
we, as in the both of us, actually did together was add a way to import perk programs inside of other perk programs. For this, we chose the keyword open, which we borrowed from a camel. As you can see, uh, the function f is not uh, defined within this file, and it is instead defined within this other file, which, as a twist, uh, also opens this file. Unlike in a camel, circular dependencies should not be a problem in perk, because since they only share the top-level definitions, nothing should be redefined uh, in a circular definition, so you can just flatten it by removing the loops. Additionally, just a few hours ago, uh, Alessandro, PhD student at the University of Edinburgh, pushed a commit in which he added public and private keywords uh, that can be used to define private and public members of models. Uh, of course, you know how this works. You can try to access non-private members of a model and everything was fine. Whereas if you try to access a private member of a model from the outside, you will get an error, essentially. You will say, try to access private field password of model user. And that would have been the end of the video, but it's not because we have two other things to talk about. Uh, we now in fact have structs, which are defined this way, and can be either initialized like this, using the make keyword and giving named parameters, or they can be initialized with no parameters and the parameters can be set afterward. The other thing I would like to talk about, which is a bit of a secret, but if you made it to this point of the video, you deserve to know all the secrets, uh, is that we, on the development branch, started working on algebraic data types. If you don't know what algebraic data types are, now I'm gonna zoom a bit, okay. Essentially, in a language like OCaml or in Haskell, you can define a type like this. So you can, you can define the list type by doing something like this. Type my list equals either the empty list or a concatenation, which is typically written cons of a uh, let's say an integer, you could even make this parametric, but let's not do it for simplicity, and a uh, my list. So essentially, these words here with the capital letters are called constructors, and they can have a certain number of parameters. In this case, the empty constructor has zero parameters, and the cons constructor has two parameters, uh, where one is an integer and the other one is a list. If I define this type, then I can do something like uh, let a equals cons of uh, 10 empty. And this is a list that contains only the number 10. Now, the interesting thing you can do with algebraic data types is pattern matching. So you can do something like, you can define a function. So let, uh, let rec, uh, length equals, so you can define the length function. Uh, the length will take a list, so L of type my list, and it will be done by matching L with, and then you go through the constructors. So uh, given an empty list, the length is zero, and given a cons of a l1, the length is 1 plus the length of l1. Now we have this function defined, and we can do something like what's the length of a, and the length of a is 1. If we were to define a as something like cons of 20, cons of 10 empty, then the length of A would be 2. Algebraic data types and pattern matching are very useful, and uh, the main use case of pattern matching is, of course, writing interpreters or compilers. And since, at some point, we want to write the perk compiler in perk itself, we will need this kind of language functionality. And that's it for today. I hope the next devlogs will be a bit less chaotic. Um, you can find all the relevant links in the description if you want to contribute. Please do contribute. 
See you next time, hopefully with Alessandro, PhD student at the University of Edinburgh.